In this video, I'll be using the assortments feature in Retail Headquarters to determine which items are available at which stores. So within the Retail Headquarters module, under Setup, uh, scroll down under to the, the Item subgroup and you'll find an assortments menu option. Uh, here in the sample data, there are three assortments that are currently defined uh, and we'll utilize these to, uh, to walk through some examples. Um, <clears throat> so basically, uh, an assortment is a mapping of uh, which products are available at which stores. And if I use my superstore example here, uh, probably the most simple example, um, but we have a, a group of stores um, called superstores, uh, and then we can see that it's associated to all items. Uh, so basically what this means is uh, I can create a, a store group uh, within that store group, I can select uh, which stores that applies to. Um, and then uh, on the right-hand side, you can specify which, uh, which items are going to be made available there. Um, so in this example, uh, we have super stores, which uh, perhaps are uh, large volume, large number, uh, large square footage, freestanding stores, uh, where just all items that are, that are carried um, by the retailer are, are also available in these stores. Um, so in this case, it's a it's a dynamic assortment, and that I'm using groups of stores and groups of products. Um, so as a new store comes online and is put into the superstore group, it will automatically uh, be part of this assortment, and therefore it will automatically carry all the items. Um, and then similarly on the other side, um, since um, the type here is all, uh, as any new item is created, uh, it will automatically be assigned to any store that is in the superstore group. Uh, so this type of assortment can be created um, and then uh, never really needs to be touched again. And as new stores are created and grouped and as new items are created, um, they're just made available based on this definition. If I go back and look at, say, a different type of assortment, I can look at my base assortment. And here, it's also based on a group of stores. Uh, and this is uh, these are stores that are um, maybe smaller in square footage, uh, maybe does less in sales volume, um, and so these are are categorized or grouped um, into a, a store group called mall stores. And now here um, they could just come right down to the fact that there isn't enough room um, within the store to carry all of the different products. So here it's a subset of products, and these are also um, based on groups, so it's a dynamic assortment, and that um, as new products are, are created and, and categorized into these groups, um, they'll automatically be made available at, at the, to the stores that are within the store group. Um, so here you can see that the mall stores will carry um, the base assortment, and the base assortment consists of all the items that are in the um, the action sports business group, the exercise business group, and the team sports business group. So if I wanted to take um, maybe uh, a, a new concept, uh, maybe uh, this retailer is going to start selling apparel, um, but they only want to make this available uh, to a limited number of stores, um, uh, at least at the start. Um, so I could do that by creating a new assortment. So I'll create an apparel assortment. On the left-hand side, I'll choose which stores or store groups um, to uh, that, that these items are going to be available in. Uh, and here, I'm actually going to choose just a, maybe just a single store. I want to try this out, uh, just as an example, at store 5. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see that you can choose um, from any of the various levels in the retail product hierarchy, um, all the way from business group um, down to retail group. And as I mentioned, these make kind of dynamic assortments because as new items are created or recategorized into these groups, they'll automatically be made available um, uh, within this assortment. Uh, or you can uh, select specific items. Um, so by choosing the item type, I can choose from any item uh, within the system. Um, all the way down to the granular level of a particular variant. Um, so I could choose just the, the large green boys t-shirt to make available here. Um, so in this case, um, this assortment wouldn't be dynamic. I'm specifying a very specific item or a very specific variant to be made available at this store. Um, so I'm actually going to go back and um, 
uh, look at my business groups and you can see that I have a business group uh, which is the highest level of the of the product hierarchy and I can very quickly and easily um, create this assortment by saying all products um, within the apparel business group are now going to be made available at store 5 um, and then if store 5 was a mall store um, then it would get the base assortment as well as this apparel assortment uh, while we're here, um, I can also talk about the add items uh, dialog. Uh, so this is an example where I'm using the group in the assortment and that makes the, assor the assortment dynamic. Uh, if I wanted to just make just the apparel products that exist today um, in this assortment, I can do that too. Um, so I could use this um, and choose item by item uh, using the drop drop-down, um, or I can use the add items dialog. And what this allows you to do is to apply some filters and it also allows multi-select. Um, so here's my, my product hierarchy uh, and we talked about making all apparel available at store 5. Um, so I could do that um, or maybe if it was just a subset, um, maybe it was only um, actual apparel and not uh, footwear and accessories, um, then by drilling down here uh, it will filter the list uh, in, the, in the center here. And then this allows for multi-select. So if I want all of these products to be added, I can take them from the available items and add them to the items to add. Um, clicking OK brings them back into the assortment here. And now this again is not a, it's not a dynamic assortment, it's these items specifically will be made available at store 5. Um, so definitely uh, two different scenarios where you're making a specific item or variant available versus a group, um, which is going to automatically make new items available in those stores. Um, one more type of uh, assortment um, would be, here's a, another example, uh, for outlet stores. And this is uh, another store group, um, which, is, uh, which uh, includes my outlet stores. Uh, and just to show the store groups real quick, I can uh, drill down on this and see that um, there is a, a store group um, called outlet stores. And I can specify which stores are in there. And this looks like store 9 is currently within that group. And then over here, it's using a special group to determine which, which items are available. Uh, and special group is um, another type of item grouping uh, that can cut across the retail hierarchy. Uh, so rather than it having to be a particular node within the hierarchy, uh, it can just be uh, its own group and it can contain um, really products from, from anywhere along the hierarchy. Uh, and it can be uh, either a specific product or variant or it can contain references to, um, to categories from the, the, the product hierarchy. Um, so if I wanted to see what that looks like, I can drill down here again and look to see which items are in the special group. And you can see it's just a, um, a selection of specific items. Uh, and like the assortment, if I were to add a new row here, I could choose um, anywhere from the product hierarchy um, or you know, all the way down to a specific variant that's made available. Uh, so what a, an assortment like this allows you to do is say that um, my outlet stores are only going to carry clearance items and then by using a special group here rather than specific items I can just maintain that special group um, which can then also be used for setting the discount on those items um, and then that also determines the, the assortment. So if I want to see the actual result of my assortment, um, I can actually do that from the list of the stores. And I believe I use store 5 as an example. Um, and if I look at my retail items for store 5, this actually explodes this out into all of the individual items. Um, so here it was going to get the base assortment as well as the apparel items that I had added um, while, while creating the new apparel assortment. And that's uh, one thing to keep in mind is that assortments are all additive. Um, so uh, any given store or store group can, can belong to multiple assortments and the store's assortment is always additive there. Um, so it'll just keep um, adding to that overall store item list. Uh, the next thing to point out here um, is related to the scheduler and the jobs that run to replicate the data down to the point of sale. Uh, so if we look at our scheduler jobs, um, there are two ways to send 
item information down to the store. Um, one is with the N job, N-1040. Uh, what this will do is it will actually send all items to all locations. Um, and so in this case, if I were to use an N job, it would ignore the assortment definition that was just defined. Um, so that's something to keep in mind in how and when um, this job is used, is that if only certain items are supposed to be available in certain stores or groups of stores, um, then you should not use the end job, because in this case, uh, the end job will send all products or all items to, to all stores. So therefore, um, the A job is, is required, and the A job will um, utilize the location distribution to uh, determine which items need to go where based on that assortment definition. Um, so uh, we know that for the A jobs to work, that the actions, the preactions need to be converted to actions. Um, so uh, the convert preactions job would be scheduled to run periodically, and then after those preactions are created, um, the A job would be run uh, periodically, and then this would actually push the right items down to the right stores.